Hey guys, in this video we're doing a tutorial on Ableton's Tension plugin, which is a physical modeling plugin that simulates string instruments like guitars and pianos and dulcimers. In a physical modeling synth, you're approximating and simulating and modeling physical instruments like the body of a guitar and how a string vibrates and how your finger interacts with the string. And by emulating all these components, you get access to a whole slew of sounds. So one of the words you'll notice in physical modeling since including tension is excitator or exciter. And that's the thing that just puts the initial energy or causes the string to vibrate. So that could be a pick in the case of a guitar or it's called a plectrum. And it could also be a hammer in the case of a piano or a bouncing hammer in the case of a dulcimer. Or it could be a bow in the case of a stringed instrument like a cello or a violin. So in this case I have a pick so you can change properties like how far down you're digging in with the pick, how hard you hit it, where you're hitting it in relation to the string. Same thing with the hammer, you can change the properties of the hammer like how heavy the hammer is, how fast it hits it. The next component intention is the actual properties of the string itself. So how long it takes for it to vibrate, how bright the sounds are. The other word you'll see is damper and that's just the thing that you add after you vibrate the string to dampen it. So in the case of a guitar it could just be your finger or your palm resting on the string. You can change the mass of my hand, how fast I press down, where I press down. The other term you'll notice is termination and that just means the place where your finger pushes down on the string and where the fret interacts with the string. And termination allows you to change different properties as well like how hard I'm pressing down on the key on the string in this case or how stiff my finger is. Once the string vibrates it can get into any kind of body and then the body will resonate and create a certain kind of sound and you can approximate different bodies like pianos, guitars and then in addition to a bridge here on an electric guitar you have electromagnetic uh, pickups which take the vibration of the string and transform them into electricity which you can then feed into an amp. All right with that in mind let's dive into the interface here. So the synth is composed into two general tabs here. One is string which is everything to do with what I just talked about and all the physical modeling properties of producing the sound. The other one is filter global and this just gives you a filter and some global settings. This section is divided into a bunch of different modules. So at the top here you have the excitator which like I said was the thing that actually causes the string to vibrate or hits the string. Then you have the damper over here and that's the thing that once the string is in motion you can dampen it by applying some kind of pressure or mass on it. Then this black area in the middle here is everything to do with the string itself so how it vibrates, how it dampens. Down here you have termination which is how your finger interacts with the string and how the frets interact with the string. Then you have pickup which could approximate the electromagnetic pickup. And then finally you have body here which changes the body of the instrument you're playing like a piano or guitar. So if we look at the drop down here you have different kinds of excitators you can pick. You have a bow, a hammer, bouncing hammer and a plectrum. All right let's start off with bow. So if you're playing something like a violin you're using a bow which has hairs underneath it and you're sliding those hairs against the string. All right so first we have force which is how hard you're pressing down on the string with the bow. Next we have friction which is the friction between the hairs on the bow and the actual string. Then you have velocity which is how fast you swing the bow across. Next to that we have position which is at which point the bow hits the string and this is a relative parameter because the string length can change. So if you set this at 0% then the bow will always hit the string at the point of termination and at 50% it'll be at the halfway point. And related to that there's this fixed position switch so if you turn this on then regardless of the size of the string the position of where the excitator hits the string will always be the same. And this is useful for guitars for example where if you're holding a guitar you're always going to pluck it at the same position regardless of what you're playing. So you'll notice for hammers the first two parameters are mass and stiffness instead of the friction of the bow. So mass just determines the actual mass of the hammer that's hitting the string. And stiffness is kind of how hard the material of the hammer is. And the other ones are similar. Velocity is how fast you're hitting the hammer down on the string. Position is the same as with the bow. And now the damping parameter is available for the hammer and that just determines how much of the energy of when you hit the string gets absorbed back into the hammer. Next if we jump to the bouncing hammer you have the exact same properties except this time the hammer is more of a dulcimer style hammer. And then finally we have plectrum which is a guitar pick. Protrusion is just how much of the surface of the pick hits the string. And stiffness is kind of how stiff the pick is. And 
the other properties are very similar. And for each of these, you'll notice these two little boxes next to these first four knobs here. And this just allows you to add quick modulation for velocity and keyboard. So you enable the damper with this little box here. And you'll notice the properties of the damper are very similar to the hammer excitator here. That's because the damper you can think of as just the mass that gets added to the string. So you have very similar properties like the mass here. Stiffness, how hard the thing is. Next to that, you have velocity, which is how fast the damper hits the string. And you'll notice that velocity is off unless gated is turned on. So when you turn gated on, that just means that the damper gets added only after you release the key. And if I turn off the excitator now, we can actually just hear the damper on its own. Moving over, we have position, which is the same property as we had here. And again, you have fixed position, so you can make the damper always the same, regardless of the length of the string. And finally, we have this damping property, which determines the overall amount of damping. 50% is really the point where you get maximum damping. If you go over 50%, then the damping becomes so strong that the actual hammer can bounce back off, which can cause the damping to be reduced. And similarly, you can assign a bunch of these parameters to the keyboard and you can assign position to velocity. Next, we have the string itself, which is this black box in the middle here. The K just sets how fast the string decays. <laughs> and you can assign that to keyboard so that the higher you play, the more decay there is. Next to that, you have ratio, which determines how the decay is applied to either as the string is held or when the string is released. So if you set it to 100%, then as you hold down the key, you get the full decay value, but when you let go, you get no decay. Versus the other way where when you let go, there is full decay, and when you press down, there's no decay. So this gives you kind of you flick it once and you get this long ringing sound. Next to that, the enharmonic property lets you set how in tune the harmonics of the sound will be, because a real world string is fairly inharmonic and an ideal mathematical approximation of a string could result in something a little too perfect. And damping is the damping of the string itself. And you can assign that to the keyboard as well. All right, next to that, we have vibrato, which you can toggle with this button here. Delay just sets how long after I press the key, the vibrato will kick in. Similarly, attack sets the time that the vibrato ramps up to its full value. And then the rate is the frequency of the oscillator that is changing the vibratos. And then the amount is the overall amount of vibrato. And then mod lets you assign the amount of vibrato to the mod wheel. Error will add some randomization between all these different parameters here. Next, we get to the termination property. So if you remember, termination is the interaction between your finger, the string, and the fret in the string. So the first property is the finger mass. So this is effectively how heavy your finger is. <laughs> then you have finger stiffness, which is how hard you're pressing down. As if you put a very light finger on it. Fret stiffness, similarly, is just the stiffness of the fret instead of your finger. And then over here, you can assign the finger mass to velocity and keys. Next to that, we have pickup, which simulates the electromagnetic pickup that you find on an electric guitar. And you can turn that off with this button here. And position has a very similar property to the other positions we've seen, where 0% is the pickup is put at the termination point, whereas 50%, you're putting the pickup kind of halfway. <laughs> And then finally, we get to the body. So you have a few different things to choose from here. You have piano, guitar, violin, and a generic shape. And for each one, you have a slew of sizes between extra large to extra small. So the first property you have is decay, which changes the overall resonance of the body. Then you have a small set of EQ parameters here, like low cut and high cut filters. And at the end, we have the string body parameter, which you can think of as a crossfader between the raw string sound and the body sound. Next, we have this filter global tab. So this is fairly simple here. We just have a filter with its own dedicated ADSR envelope and LFO. And it's a multi-mode filter. So you have all the standard filter types that you see in other Ableton plugins. You can change the cutoff frequency and resonance using this little dot here, or you can change the values directly in these boxes here. And then for each one, you can assign envelope, LFO, or keyboard tracking. So envelope has all the standard stuff you would expect. It's an ADSR envelope, so you can change the values directly in here or by changing these sliders here, same thing. You can assign velocity to attack and sustain. Next, we have the LFO, which has all the standard waveforms you can find in all the Ableton plugins. And then you can set the delay time, how long it takes for the LFO to kick in, the attack, which is how long it takes for it to ramp up, and then the rate, which is the frequency of the LFO, which you can set in either hertz or beat divisions if you want to sync it to your DAW. 
And it's worth noting if you pick the Foreman filters, the resonance slider turns into a vowel picker. As you can see here, you have U, O, A, E, I. Next in the global section at the top, we have keyboard, which gives you all the standard things like changing the octave, the semitone, and detuning in sense. Here you can pick how many voices you want, either a mono synth or a full 32 voice poly synth. Pitch bend is the range that when you move the pitch bend up and down, how much it'll change the pitch. Stretch is a way to set different kinds of tuning. At 0%, you have equal temperament. As you increase it, the stretching starts expanding. Error will add randomization of tuning between the notes. Priority just sets that when you run out of voices and you play too many notes, which note will take priority. Under that, you have enable unison. When you enable unison, you're effectively stacking voices together to create a fatter sound. You can stack between two and four voices. You can set how much the extra voices are detuned relative to each other. And you can set a delay property so that when you press a key, the other voices come in a bit later. And then at the end, we have portamento, which is just glide and it slides the notes between each other. You can set the glide time, set legato so that portamento only happens when you hold a note and press another note. And you can turn on proportional portamento so that if you play longer stretches of notes, you get a longer portamento time. And then finally, we have the global volume which we saw in the string section. It's the same exact knob. All right, so that covers everything you need to know for tension. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like the video and share it with anyone who's learning Ableton Live. And if you want to be up to date and get more tutorials like this, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when a new tutorial is up. And I'll see you guys in the next one.